um, <laughs> um, I'm Jordy. I'm the director of food services here at Creighton School District. Um, tonight, I want to talk to you and share with you some information that we received from parent student food service focus groups. This just was our, our simple way of gaining information. The um, purpose of these food focus groups was twofold. One, we wanted to obtain feedback from parents um, and students on our menu. And the second part was to educate both the parents and students on how the menus are developed. Basically, why we do what we do. Why it, that menu looks the way it does. Um, we included in our training the new federal regulations, which became effective almost a year ago, July 1 of 2012. Our parent group um, was formed with um, the help of community ed. Um, the parent liaisons um, were asked to obtain names of parents who would be interested in participating in our focus group. And we asked for five parents from each school. Um, and our first meeting was on February 5th, and we had 19 parents representing six sites. So uh, not quite the turnout but that we wanted, but um, we had some good conversations that day. Our student groups um, were comprised of sixth and seventh graders, and um, we preferably, we were looking for five students from those two grade levels. Um, and I had specifically told the site administrators that um, I didn't necessarily need the best and the brightest. We just wanted to have students that would come to us and would easily talk and communicate with us regarding their likes, um, their friends, what they had been talking with with their friends. Um, we, during our focus groups with the students, we provided them with lunch. It's kind of like if you feed them, they're going to talk to you a little bit more. Um, these groups were very interesting. Some groups were instantly chatty. We couldn't stop them from talking, and other students um, took a little bit to get them going, and they would talk more to us, and some groups we just had to pull the information out of them. Um, we met with the students beginning in February, and we had our last student luncheon um, the end of April. So it took a little while, um, but we had spring break, and we had AIMS, and we had parent-teacher conferences in there, so just took a little bit of time to get that one done. What did we ask? What questions did we ask them? We, were, we asked the same questions of both groups. We asked, what do you eat at home? Um, what do you like about the menu? And what would you like to see added on the menu? Um, we also asked, it's not listed on here, but we also asked them for feedback on our fresh fruit and vegetable program that we have. Um, and explained and did some education to them on that. Of course, the main thing that the students wanted with that was they wanted to have fruits all the time, and we said it's a fruit and vegetable, so we um, asked for their suggestions. Um, the first question that we had asked is, what do you eat at home? And this slide kind of gives you a picture of both of what the parents said that they give their kids uh, their students um, and what the students told us that they eat at home. Um, there's some similarities between both groups. Um, burritos, beans and rice, chicken, sandwiches, um, those types of things. The next question was, what do you like about the menu? Um, the parents pointed out that they like that there's fresh fruits on the menu, um, that we're serving whole grains, and um, that th we're serving a variety of milk, um, that it is a lower fat milk, and um, they gave us a couple of other items that they liked. The students said they liked the fresh fruit, they like um, all of our chicken products they liked, um, they love cheeseburgers, um, not necessarily hamburgers, it has to have the cheese with it. Um, they love the hot dogs and the corn dogs, um, and of course not chosen and gelatas they like. Um, we asked both groups, what would you like to see added? Um, and there, here again, you can see some similarities. Um, sandwich options was both. 
Um, the parents said they'd like to see steamed vegetables or maybe some kind of a cooked vegetable on the menu. The parents wanted fewer sugary cereals and the students wanted more sugary <laughs> cereals. So, <laughs> <laughs> we kind of explained to them that we do look at our cereals to be whole grain and lower in sugar. Um, what were our conclusions from this, from the groups that we had? Um, well, basically, we found that most of the items we serve are really well received and liked by the students, which is the ultimate group that we're out there to try and please. Um, their concerns are more about how the food has been prepared, how it's presented, um, and this was a common thread that was on both sides, both the parents and the students. Um, and from those, from our group meetings that we had, um, we're going to be making a few little changes for next year. Um, first, we're going to a five-week cycle menu instead of, we currently um, have been on a four-week cycle menu. At, and it was interesting at our first parent meeting that we had, one of the parents asked, why do we always have pizza every other Monday? And um, really didn't have a good answer. It's just the way we've been planning the menus that way. And the students were like, yeah, we always have pizza every other Monday. And I'm like, busted on that one. That's my four-week <laughs> cycle gone. So um, we're going with uh, a five-week cycle, which is going to break it up, uh, you're not going to have those repeating days like that. And um, be paying much more careful attention and not having certain items always on certain days. So no more pizza every other Monday. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to continue to evaluate our quality control systems and the presentation of our items. Um, we're changing to a new container for how um, we serve our fresh fruits and vegetables. Instead of a little paper boat um, that we've been using that looks pretty institutional, we're going to something that looks a, a little bit nicer, um, and hopefully it'll just present itself better to the students. Um, because we all know that we eat with our eyes, and so if they come through and it looks good, hopefully they'll take those vegetables and eat them. Um, we're continuing, as always, to evaluate and offer new products. Um, as you saw, one of the comments from both the students and the parents was they would like to see um, a sandwich option on. And so this May, a um, couple weeks before school was out, we piloted a new sandwich entree. Um, we don't have a, a cute name for it other than it's just a turkey sandwich, but it uh, basically is turkey, turkey on um, fishy bread. It's shaped like the goldfish crackers, only it's bread, um, and it's a whole grain bread. And we packaged that, made the sandwich, packaged it with mustard, mayonnaise, and <coughs> a package of the fishy crackers. And um, let me just share with you an email that one of my site managers um, sent me that afternoon after she had tried it at her site. Um, she said, we made 24 turkey and cheese fish sandwiches. They swam right out of here as fast as we could put them out. Went and asked the students how they liked them and they said they were good. I think you have a winner here. Maybe next year we will be, we will be making them by the schools of fish. So um, <laughs> we're gonna, that was a real positive. We're gonna put those on the menu starting in the fall. Um, we're going to offer them just three days a week every other week. Um, if we offer it too much, the kids will get tired of it and they won't take them. Um, we're going to, one of the other things we're going to look at doing is providing more education to our parents and to our students about um, just about how we do the menu um, and healthy eating, those types of things. So in conclusion, um, the focus groups were just a great format for us for gathering information and feedback on our menus um, and for educating the parents and the students. We learned from this experience that we're, we are doing many good things, um, that we need to do some more monitoring and adjusting um, with items, and that we always need to listen to our customers. Um, so that was basically our 
our, fo our focus groups. It was fun. It was a different way for us to do it rather than a paper and a pencil survey or a computer survey. It was really getting down and talking to them. So, any questions? I have a few. Okay. <laughs> um, one is, um, do the children have an option of a salad bar if, say, there's some vegetarian children in lieu of what's on the lunch menu for that day? We don't have salad bars, but we do have, we do offer generally two vegetables each day, um, and then we have salad entree options too. Um, if so if someone's a vegetarian, they just get another vegetable? They so could, we also offer peanut butter and um, jelly sandwiches if they're um, vegetarian. Um, next year we're going to be partnering, partnering our um, PB&J sandwiches with like a cheese stick and um, a package of Teddy Grahams. So it's a, a, a complete entree. Okay. And the other, I have four questions actually. So the other question I have is, um, have you made any effort or even thought about um, products that have high fructose corn syrup in them? Because I noticed that lots of the little packaged apple sauces don't need to really have high fructose corn syrup in them, but they do a lot in schools. Um, have you even thought about that? We, we look at um, the ingredients. We don't use the packaged apple sauces like that. Um, most of our um, fruit that we get is um, either canned in its own juice or an extremely light syrup. Um, most of our fruit is um, from USDA commodities too. So as they, as the, the government is cutting the sugar content, um, then we will also cut ours too. Okay. Well, it's kind of a difference between just regular sugar and high fructose right. corn syrup, but yeah. Okay, and then um, when you said that some of the parents wanted steamed vegetables, so that's not an option. It's either um, fresh vegetables or no vegetables, or um, do you have steamed vegetables? We actually sometimes? do. We prefer, um, and I guess this is my personal influence on it, prefer having the fresh vegetables out there because I think there's more calories in it are more, not calories, but the more nutritional value in it versus it being steamed. Um, we just haven't done any of the steamed vegetables in the past. Um, we don't have steamers in our kitchens. Mm -hmm. So um, it's not that we're opposed to doing it. We would just have to get real creative as to how we did it. Okay, and the last question I have is about the trays that the kids use. I haven't been in the cafeteria, so I have no presumption about what they're using. I know years ago, it used to be the hard plastic tray, and they get run through a dishwasher and then get reused every day. But I've noticed in some schools, not, not in Creighton schools, that there's these styrofoam trays that aren't recyclable, just end up in the landfill, and just really, you know, um, so I'm just wondering if, we're using styrofoam products in the cafeterias or okay. we are using styrofoam trays um we did have two schools that we um use the hard the traditional plastic trays that go through a dishwasher um however i can tell you that at that at those schools um when there's an employee absence in the cafeteria that person that would be in the dishroom is the first one pulled to work for propane or um, serving on the line in that school with the new styrofoam trays. Um, we have looked at, um, and as products get better, we will continue to look at uh, trays that are more recyclable um, than the styrofoam trays are. Yeah, because there are those kind of cardboard-ish. There is, yeah. and um, this past spring, um, we had a dietetic intern with us, and we asked her, to look at that. Um, at the information that came back wasn't real favorable. I think um, there just needs to be a little more um, technology involved in it to make it a more sturdy tray on the ones that we had looked at. Mm -hmm. I've seen so them in hospital good. cafeterias and stuff, and they seem pretty sturdy. Yeah, and I know. Okay. That's all. Other questions? Um, well, thank you for your presentation. It was very well done. Um, just in terms of 
sort of what foods students are eating and, and try not to be a geek about asking a data question about food. Mm -hmm. um, but are, do you regularly notice or, or, or have staff look at sort of the waste at, at the end of a lunch you know, hour or so? And it's one thing for students to take food off the line because it's there and, right. and they're encouraged to do that and there may even be some social pressure to take the fruit and vegetable and have it on their, and, and on their tray, but eating it is a whole other story. So I love that the difference between what parents say that they that their children eat and what children eat. There's something to serve your child on something and have them actually eat it is a whole scale other story. Um, so I'm wondering, do you do you get a sense or do you employ that sort of as a, a strategy to understand, you know, what's working, what's not working with the fresh fruits and vegetables? Um, and so, and if not, do you think that there's some value in perhaps introducing that? as a way to get a sense of, you know, we introduced something new as a pilot and, and we from sales it looks like it was, you know, fairly positive, but in, in actuality it didn't, you know, it wasn't consumed. We don't do, um, what you're talking about is like um, a plate waste study. We don't do true plate waste studies. Um, we rely, I rely a lot on the feedback from my site managers who are actually in there. Um, and. Um, this year, with the new regulations, uh, for a meal to be, for a lunch meal to be reimbursable, a student has to take a fruit or vegetable. Um, not always are they eaten, so I do have had some healthy garbage cans out there because um, it, it ends up in the garbage can just because they've had to take it. Um, I the feedback my site managers give us quite a bit of feedback on um, this item was, you know, we served it. Um, it was really popular today and the kids really liked it um, and they ate it. Um, so that's where we get just a lot of verbal feedback. I mean, I might, moving forward and as we think about performance metrics and, you know, considering how we can continue to improve them, I, mean, I think that not as a, a measure that would incur a significant cost. Mm -hmm. um, I certainly don't want to, you know, put anything in place that's going to, you know, increase staff workload and or a cost to the district. But I do think that there's a value in, in addition to just the observation mm -hmm. piece, really, you know, at least spot checking, at least on in some interval, um, what's happening. I think the other piece that um, I'm curious to know, and, and if whether you have an opinion about this or not, is that I, I know that. Um, there's the conversations sort of in school systems about whether or not lunch should be served, you know, before or after a recess, mm -hmm. and whether or not when lunch is served, you know, before the recess, that there's an increased amount of waste because, quite honestly, the kiddos just want to get out and be on the playground versus in campuses where recess happens. They have an opportunity to sanitize their hands, and then they come in to lunch, and then they know no one's rushing into class. <laughs> after lunch, um, so they eat it and eat and consume. So whether or not there's, and I'll, I believe there's a couple of our campuses we do, we that have that flipped lunch, mm -hmm. so if there's any differences in terms of what you feel like from your site managers, um, and you get a better consumption of the product, in particular fruits and vegetables, in the later um, we do have several of our campuses um, that do where they play first and then they eat. Um, and the children will be sitting at the table, they actually sit at the table longer with the food in front of them. So, you know, they're just sitting there naturally, they're going to eat a little bit more. So they do eat more um, versus if they're coming in and, and like you said, they're anxious, their mind's on out to the playground and they don't eat. Other questions? Mm -hmm. If not, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Story. And we will move on to discussion and next steps regarding the use of solar in the Creighton School.